find the presentation. Here we are. So let me know if you could see my screen. Yes. Okay, and I start to present. Okay. Is it visible? Yes, yes. Okay, awesome, awesome. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. so let me like uh, notify you about the current session. So it's, it's my sixth session uh the community but today we will have slightly different format um like we will have like less theoretical information and more practical stuff so let's um, try to quickly review what we have from theoretical stuff and um, jump to some practical things and try to do some some cool cool stuff so today we will talk about the uh spinnaker so probably uh, most of you had chance to hear about about this tool uh, but hadn't chance to try it because like it's slightly heavy uh, and I hadn't chance like to participate with this topic because I hadn't enough resource on my laptop before but for now we have this opportunity um let's take a look on the our agenda related this presentation. So we will discuss like the main things about the spinnaker, like what is that, what are the main constraints, uh, what are the possible use cases, why we need this, how we can implement, like how we can involve it in our current CI CD processes. Um, a little bit about the architecture to understand like how it works inside. Um, then we will check main items related to the configuration. Uh, I'll give you some additional tutorials that will help you to deep dive, and then we will just jump to the implementation demo. So what actually is the Spinnaker? So it's the some kind of CI CD platform, so mostly continuous delivery, however, you can perform the CI actions with it, but um, uh, nobody use it in such way yeah, just for the continuous delivery it was created by the netflix for management of their uh, vms infrastructure however like it supports different cloud platforms and also it supports the kubernetes platform and actually we will take a look on this tool in the scope just how to use it with the kubernetes um what are actually the main features so it allows you um, like to execute a different like instrument and execute the different continuous delivery pipeline and actually uh, with all the features that it has it allows you to build the, the different deployment strategies like canary blue green uh, and etc uh, also it contains some some integrations with different ci systems so with the vm bakery systems um, the strong artifact system um, judgment system and also role-based access control the also additional great stuff about this that like when we will create the pipelines it supports some kind of uh, expressions so we uh, will be able not to hard code everything but we will be able to create some kind of reusable pipelines and if you have like a lot of different microservices that we need to operate with uh, like it will be easy to configure everything uh, what are the main advantages and, and disadvantages so the biggest advantage is that it's uh, like totally free and open source platform like Jenkins here. Yeah? Why everybody love, love Jenkins here? Yeah? Because like it's free, yeah, you can use it. However, there is the um, some kind of paid version that is called Armory, but it's it's the same Spinnaker. However, like it's a platform as a service, so like that guys will like deploy Spinnaker on your infra or on, or on their own infra um, and uh, you won't be need to maintain it also it supports a lot of different cloud with a lot of popular diff cloud platforms uh, you can use it for any kind of t-shirts or for your deployments like small deployments uh, x large deployments and etc um, like the main disadvantages that like sometimes happens that the user interface is slightly confusing so you will see this during the practical practical demo however like it's not something crucial 
Yeah, so it will be fine. Another stuff it's the authorization system. Yeah, so the authorization system, the Spinnaker itself uh, has no uh, authentication system and it relies on the different identity providers or the different authentication and authorization methods like Kubernetes. Yeah, so Kubernetes. Um, doesn't have any kind of like user database or groups database or something like that. Mm -hmm. So the same for the Spinnaker. However, like it's a, from another side that it's a great stuff that will allow you like to integrate it with your current uh, Active Directory or something like that. Uh, and uh, additional mm -hmm. stuff, it's like that uh, it's not the orchestrating system, so it won't allow you like to orchestrate the instance like ansible or puppet yes yeah, so if you will have any kind of artifacts you will be need like to restart the vms uh, with a fresh uh, for example fresh imi or something like that yeah or in the case of the kubernetes with a fresh docker image so yes yeah, so, because you can implement this with for example jenkins or not with the spinnaker uh Beside the Spinnaker, we need to understand uh, one more definition, like actually information about the one of the tool that is called Halyard. So the Halyard is the CLI utility that allows you to like configure, deploy, and manage the your Spinnaker instances. Yeah, so with one Halyard CLI, you can like deploy multiple Spinnaker instances, like separate instance for the development and separate for the production like an example but as spinnaker is uh, like heavy system yeah so because um, the smallest installation requires at least 20 gigabytes of ram um, definitely it will be slightly costly yeah, to deploy multiple instances from my practice i could say that like at least just at least one instance of Spinnaker will care about the multiple environments. So you can definitely slightly scale it, yeah, but no needs to manage the different ones. Just in case if you have the multi-tenancy and you must have it for the different clients or something like that. Yeah, so the hard yard, it will be our first step that we will use, like we'll perform for the installation of our Spinnaker. Uh, let's finish with definitions and let's take a look on the use case. So before we will check all the details about the configuration and etc. Let's try to understand how we can use it. It's a simple use case. So uh, you have the like some kind of Git repo and like um, in, the, in this Git repo for, for, for the Kubernetes, you will be need to store like two kinds of artifacts. It's a manifest and you will be need also to store the Docker image. So in this case, once you will commit all the changes to the GitHub, it will trigger the Jenkins job that will build the uh, Docker images. And um, once the Docker image will be ready and manifests will be ready, they will trigger the Spinnaker uh, that will perform some kind of load testing or end-to-end -end testing, uh, and then deploy everything to the uh, to the cloud. Yeah. However, this is not just like single use case. In, in our presentation, we have the, like five different use cases. Yeah. This is the second one. Yeah. It's not related to the vanilla kubernetes it mostly related to the eks however the flow is the same yeah so you um, build uh, your docker images from the git repo uh, once it's done you uh, deploy everything to the uat yeah perform some kind of manual testing um yeah, so about the building of the image just with Spinnaker, no. Yeah, so you can perform this with triggering of the Jenkins or using the uh, image bakery. Yeah, uh, but there is no direct building system. Yeah, but I, I will I will explain this um, uh, during our, our demo, so no worries. I'll keep this in mind. Yeah, once you will perform the UART, you can like. Um, then execute the blue green and deploy everything to the production it's the second case another case like that you can use the helm charts for that purposes yeah so the same 
you have the Jenkins that um, like will build the configurations or parameters that you will be need uh, to use. And as input for the Spinnaker, you will use the um, some kind of Docker image and the Helm chart. Yeah, so with Jenkins, you will just build the parameters and then just parameterize the Helm chart. And on the bake stage, the main manifests for your Kubernetes will be rendered. And after that, these manifests, yeah, as a, as an artifact, uh, it will be deployed to the Kubernetes. Yeah. Um, another case, the Spinnaker could be triggered not just with Git, but it can monitor the Docker registry. Yeah, so you uh, perform all CI uh, pipeline, like build the image and push it to the registry. Once the image will be will persist in the in the registry, the Spinnaker will check this out, find the appropriate version of the Helm chart, perform the bake, and again deploy everything to the, um, for example, the environment. Uh, and like another case, yeah. So you can just trigger the um, uh, Spinnaker pipeline, yeah, with with some parameters. You can trigger it. Uh, and then it will take some kind of Helm charts in, in, and inject the image just on the deploy stage. So it will use the image as an artifact. And actually, we will we will check how 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 this how this works. So you won't be need to hard code the image version in your manifest. So you will be able to override this with the Spinnaker. Um, yeah. So, but uh, it's just. Um, a couple of examples. You can build your pipelines according to your needs. Yeah. However, you for now you could see that um, there are a lot of different ways how this could be done. <clears throat> well, let's take a look uh, on the architecture like, to understand how it works inside and um, how how to configure all, all this stuff. So actually the Spinnaker, uh, it's the distributed system. So you can actually install it as a standalone. However, it's recommended in, in Kubernetes way, it's uh, recommended to use it in the distributed way. So it has a lot of different services. So I won't order all of them. Uh, yeah, so the most uh, important, it's a DAC and gate. Yes, yeah, so DAC, it's the, it's the UI container. Gate, it's the API gateway server. So the gate will route all the um, all the traffic to the rest of the services, and will just um, like response with some kind of summarized data. So here is it. So how the architecture works. Yeah. So all the all API calls or all calls from the UI. Um, so they will go uh, across the different services and will just bring the final final response. Yeah, in our case, we can also create some kind of high available architecture. Yeah, so some services um, could be splitted to different subservices and then will be scaled. So again, it will be it will depend. Yeah, for example, if you will be need to run like more pipelines, so you can just scale some some kind of service. It's a great stuff because for the different purposes, you will be able to scale some specific features, not uh, not the whole system. Yeah, so this will definitely save your time and costs. Yeah, so how the how it actually looks? So we can uh, split the cloud driver server. Yeah, for example, um, and also we can split the echo uh, echo server. Yeah, echo, it's uh, something like the uh, like event bus. Yeah, yeah and uh, the rest of the stuff it works in the same way. Yeah, but these components, it, it's mostly like the cloud driver and the echo service is mostly uh, high loaded services. So it's recommended to uh, like start with uh, with this approach. What about the cloud platforms? So you could see the set of the cloud platforms that are supported by the by the Spinnaker. However, um, like it supports a set of the like webhook system and scripting system that will allow you to operate, for example, with um, with another another cloud platform. 
However, like this will be um, more difficult. But for uh, presented cloud platforms, the Spinnaker has like the native support and like it will be easy to operate with all that stuff. Yeah, so in our case, we will just operate with Kubernetes. Uh, also, the Spinnaker has um, the um, integration with some CI platforms. Yeah, so as you could see, most of most of them are, are commercial one. Yeah, and we have here the Jenkins. So from my experience, like it's uh, enough to use uh, like Jenkins uh, with Spinnaker. Just give me a sec. Okay, so we will have the charge. Beside the <clears throat> CI platform, so Spinnaker has ability to analyze the metrics um, for performing the, the canary, canary releases. And as you could see, most of the past platform like Datadog or New Relic um, are supported and also the Prometheus is supported. So in our case, like for our um, examples today we will use the Prometheus because we can like easily easily deploy it however like uh, from my experience we use the data dog so and um, all of them works in the same way so it's pretty standard integration uh, another stuff that I mentioned before that Spinnaker has uh, hasn't its own authorization system yeah so how how everything will works like you will go through the UI with the deck to the gate, yeah, and gate will um, connect to the identity provider to perform all the stuff. So you can use the different um, authentication protocols like OAuth or SAML or LDAP. And if you, for example, don't want to do that, you can use the certificates like as a standalone mechanism. Uh, one thing that we mentioned before that the Spinnaker has its own CLI tool, so you, you probably will be able to do not use the UI, but use everything through the CLI. So in that case, the certificates authentication will work fine for you. The same for the authorization system, um, like, but in our case, we will just omit it because there are a lot of different informations related to it. So I'll just leave the link to the reference on it and like you can check it by yourself so the configuration summary let's take a look like step by step how to configure it so we have the basic installation and we have the extended installation so the basic installation it's the minimal set of the features uh, that we need to configure before like use Spinnaker. But for the production purposes, we will be need to configure everything else. So the first step, as I mentioned before, we need to install the Halyard. So with Halyard, we will perform all the configurations. Then we will be need to choose the cloud providers. So it's a like, set of the um, cloud providers that we will use to deploy the Spinnaker services. Yeah, and then we will be need to uh, choose the environment. So uh, it could be, for example, containerized environment, distributed way and recommended way that I mentioned, and it could be standalone way. So you can deploy it, for example, on the VM with uh, Debian or Ubuntu. Uh, once you configure this, then you need to configure the storage for the, um, for the persistent data, like pipelines, configurations, and settings. Yeah, so this could be um, different kind of um, object storages like S3, Google Cloud Storage, uh, Oracle Object Storage, uh, Azure Storage Accounts, or for example, in our cases, we don't have them uh, like access to the cloud, we can use Minio yeah, instead of the S3. So we will configure everything as a S3, but we will use Minio instead. So it's uh, mostly the, the same approach. And once we configure it, all that items, we will just um, deploy the Spinnaker services, connect to the um, our instance, and we'll start to configure everything else. Beside uh, these main steps, there is another optional stuff that you can configure, and actually that we will configure uh, on on our in our example. Yeah, so the image bakery. So the 
Spinnaker has like the um, support of uh, like embedded support of the HashiCorp Packer, so you can like use the Packer to build your uh, different IMIs um, and mostly in, in the Docker images, if if I remember correctly. Uh, another step it's configuration of the security like, because by default everybody will have the access with admin privileges to your system so you will be need to protect it and then we will be need to connect some kind of ci systems to perform some stages or uh, to be triggered by the by this that ci systems logging and monitoring so this step i will omit today because like we had a lot of different sessions related to the logging and monitoring so it will be easy for you to um, like set up the monitoring because like Spinnaker will provide the logs and metrics um, as a standard service. So just configure the Prometheus, collect the metrics, and everything will be fine. And another step is the um, canary analysis support. So it's a great feature of the Spinnaker, but it's slightly complicated in configuration because for that purpose, you will be need to configure the metric service that will be used as a storage and the storage service yeah it's um again it could be any kind of object storage that spinnaker will use to separately store the uh, canary analysis reports yeah but no worries we will take a look on all that stuff i prepared uh, all the run books so you will be able to easily reproduce that Additional stuff for the for the productioning of your uh, Spinnaker instance that it supports the um, caching, so you can use the Redis for that purposes. By default, the Spinnaker set up their uh, its own Redis. However, um, you can like deploy your own instance or use um, Redis as a service, and then connect it to the different services of the Spinnaker. <clears throat> Additional stuff is persistence, so to store some kind of uh, critical data uh, and to uh, have like quicker access to that data. So the these three services of Spinnaker could be integrated with uh, MySQL database. Yeah, so to do not use the object storage for some critical data that must be um, quickly received so you can integrate everything with mysql so it's a recommended approach for them uh, for the production instances um how to configure everything uh, where to find the information about this so definitely you can um, refer to the official documentation it's uh, um, very detailed uh, however like it would take some time to meet with all um, all documentation stuff so uh, for that purposes um, this the spinnaker like has them their own uh, electron book for that purposes it's um, it has not too much pages yeah however it's fully described how to manage the spinnaker instance how to build um different kind of deployment strategies with it and also some kind of best practices so if you want to um, continue to work with spinnaker so i definitely recommend to spend like one day to meet with this book so um, i'll share the presentation in the presentation you have a link so this book is totally free so you can download it from the official spinnaker site um and this will be definitely useful for you also you can, you can use it as a some kind of pocketbook uh and it was the quickest presentation um like across all all my sessions yeah so we will go to the implementation demo so as i mentioned before um we uh must uh configure the spinnaker itself uh and build some kind of uh, some kind of application so i prepared a set of the um, set of the like set of the artifacts that you will be need for the practical demo yeah and um, we will use it so i'll share it in our blog and also it's uh available uh, on the github so you can 
clone this repo and perform all the actions that you need. <clears throat> Let's start uh, from the actual installation. So I prepared the set of the scripts that you will be need uh, to use. I we won't be um, we won't run it because I prepared everything to save our time and reduce the time for this session and mostly have some time for the discussion. Um, so I'll just open the script and explain what we have there. So all the scripts are standalone, so it will be easy for you like, to use it. So for the local installation, we will be need to use the um, like mini cube, or if you have your own cloud platforms and you are able to launch your clusters, so it's fine. So here, the main uh, configuration items that you need to pay attention, it's amount of the memory. Yeah, as I will have a lot of, beside, um, beside the Spinnaker, I will have a lot of different services here and I will perform the load testing. Yeah, so I need like enough memory, so 24 gigabytes. However, if I will take a look here, so 22 gigabytes are all, already in use. <clears throat> yeah. Also, as a CNI, I use Calico because our application will use the network policies. However, like you can disable this feature if you don't want to play with it. And also set of the add-ons, um, uh, the most important is the default storage class and ingress. Yeah, so we will use the ingress resources and we'll use, we will use the persistent volume claims. So you will be need to like um, have the standard storage storage class support. Uh, the second step, like once we will have our um, our uh, Minikube cluster, we need to install Minio. So here, all, all the script for the installation will perform the installation from the Helm chart and also uh, will give you ability um, like to connect to these services. Yeah, for example, to the Minio. Let's open the Minikube dashboard. Yeah, because we will control all the services that we need. Um, and let's open one more new tab. And expose the new. Yeah, so you definitely could say that as we included the ingress, why I don't use ingress because like I'm lazy, so I had a chance to configure that. Um, we need some kind of secrets here. Here we are. Okay, enough memory here. Let's try to probably abandon the menu. Yeah, so let's check what we have, like what else we have. So we have the Jenkins installation here. So with persistent storage and um, actually the Kubernetes support included. So we will be able to build our images uh, for our proposals with the, uh, with that embedded stuff um, and with launching of the pods inside of the Kubernetes. Okay, let's try to do this. So I hope that Jenkins will work better than Minio. It will it will be fine for you. Okay, so, some problems with uh, with Minio, I think, uh, because definitely it's uh, loaded by the by the Spinnaker. Yeah, but with Jenkins, everything is fine. So we have uh, a simple simple pipeline here. Yeah, uh, simple scripted pipeline. Yeah, that we will use to like simply build and push our image. So all the images are available in the in the Docker Hub. Uh, how it actually looks. So if you take a look on this pipeline, so it's pretty, pretty simple. We have the parameter that 
that will allow allow us to select the branch. So we will use two different branches uh, to demonstrate how the canary works. So we will use the master and develop stuff for that purposes. And the rest of the stuff are pretty simple. Yeah, Docker Docker build and Docker push. So everything will be fine. Um, yeah, so it's what about Jenkins? Once we install the Jenkins, we also need to install the Prometheus. So Prometheus has like more parameters here and uh, we will use Prometheus to store our application metrics. Uh, once uh, like we will perform the canary analysis, uh, like during the canary analysis, we will uh, perform some kind of load testing. Yeah, and we will be need to have the persistent storage for our methods. So it's a reason why this configuration looks slightly, slightly ugly. Once we install all the prerequisites, we can start with like configuration of, uh, of our, our spin again. So the first stuff that you will be need to perform, it's the configure um, the access to to your cluster with the service account. So you will be need to create the spent service account. So I just added simple manifest how it works. So it's service account that has the binding for the cluster admin role. Yeah, so it's like an example, but for your production systems, uh, you will be need to create the cluster role with just um, required required permissions yeah so don't rely on the cluster admin it's like just for demo purposes uh, so create the service account get the token for this service account and um, set your like mini cube credentials uh, to use additionally token um, extra stuff here that uh by default the cube config relies on the certificates like certificates pass and for the spinnaker purposes we will be need um, to use uh, embedded certificates so like uh, an example yeah so let's go to the uh, just remember this because this is important yeah so here it relies on the on the pass here yeah, so now I can patch my um, my credentials. Uh, zero five. I'm sorry, go to the scripts. Zero five. Spinnaker credentials. Yeah, so for now, I will reload it. So all my certificates and all my credentials are embedded in into this file. Why we need this? Because this Halyard will use these files. To provide the credentials for Kubernetes, um, like to Spinnaker. So just just be careful with that. And once we will have everything installed, um, we have we will be need to install the Hull yard because. Uh, but like uh, you can install it locally. However, I prefer um, like the way with the Docker image because you will be able to easily upgrade your hull yard because uh, every time like if you will be need like a newer or newer and newer version of your spinnaker you will be need also um, use the latest version of the hull yard so by default uh, all the data that produce the hull yards is stored in the home.hal folder so i have it has it locally yeah and i just mounted it to the hull yard uh, container also, I mounted my Kubernetes credentials uh, and folder with my scripts because I will execute the rest of the scripts inside of this container. <clears throat> Once we um, started the um, hull yard, so we can actually perform this. Let's take a look how many resources we have. Okay, probably enough. Don't care about this permission stuff because uh, like every time, like j just for case, like uh, this script changed the permissions for that files, like to be um, available inside of the whole yard container. Yeah, but uh, as it's already changed, so 
uh, this uh, step is just just omitted. So don't care. This is not so critical. So where we are here, um, okay, we're in the script folder. So uh, we will configure everything using Hal Yard. How the Hal Yard works? So we just need to uh, execute Hal config and then um, some subset uh, of the of the commands uh, under the config. The Spinnaker has like all the methods uh, related to the hull yard, all the configurations method described uh, on their documentation. So no worries. Uh, additionally, uh, like in all the scripts, I added like uh, a reference for that part of the like installation. So if you have any kind of problems, so just refer to, to the link above and you will find all the information. So the first stuff that we will do is we will set, um, enable the Kubernetes support and then add our uh, our mini cube as a as a default default Kubernetes cluster. Once everything like, will be configured, we need to select the environment. So in our case, we will use like not a standalone but distributed environment. So we will select distributed and point that we will deploy our Spinnaker to our Minikube account that we configured here. Then we need to configure the storage. So it's a third step, you remember it. So we installed the Minio before, created the access key inside of the Minio. So let's let's check, probably I will be able, okay, let's do not spend the time for it. So you will generate the access key and secret key. So everything like in AWS, and then you will be just configured the S3 storage and uh, rely on the um, on the Minio installed in, inside of the Kubernetes. Yeah, so it's a Minio service inside of the Minio namespace. So it's like easy um, easy to remember. Uh, one specific stuff here, yeah, that Minio has has no ability to operate with um, domain based buckets. Yeah, so this path style access parameter is mandatory. So if you will use the S3, so just uh, omit this. If you use the Minio, you definitely will be need to use this. Uh, it's described in the documentation, so no needs to memorize it and everything will be fine. Select the default service account that we will use, uh, sorry, storage account that we will use for the storage. And as we use the Minio, um, just uh, for some specific service that use the S3, it's front 50. So we will just disable the version because Minio um, doesn't support the version. Additionally, we will enable the pipeline templates feature. However, like this is optional ways. So you can use it or you can just do not use it. Um, then we will add set of the um, sources where we will take the artifact. So in our case, we will use the GitHub. So we will be able to download uh, why actually we configure the uh, Git repo and GitHub. So Git repo will allow you to clone the whole repo. GitHub will allow you to download just the specific file from the GitHub repo through the API. So configure both of them. So it will, will, it will be useful. Uh, another stuff, it's um, like Jenkins. So before configuration of the Jenkins, go to your configuration, the configuration of your account uh, and create, like generate the API token. So use this token um, uh, in that script. And again, we have the Jenkins service uh, in the Jenkins namespace. So admin password and our token. And the greatest stuff, it's the canary analysis. So here we have a, a, a lot of different commands. So we need to enable the canary analysis feature. We need to enable the Prometheus metrics uh, for the canary analysis. Then we need to add the Prometheus account. Yeah, so we will use, in our case, we will use them, the Prometheus operator. Yeah. Um, because like to do not patch the 
with Prometheus configs on fly. So we will just use the um, native way with the service monitor. So we will provide the like service monitor um, resource uh, together with our application and uh, the Prometheus will be automatically configured. Uh, okay, sorry, let's, let's go back. Uh, then you need to enable some kind of uh, canary, so uh, canary storage. So here it could be AWS or uh, GCS. Yeah, so uh, we will use um, like it's it's not uh, the actual support of the AWS or uh, GCP. It's uh, just the pointer to the cloud platform that will provide the object storage, like S3 or Google Cloud Storage. So as we use Minio here, <coughs> so we just uh, point the bucket that must be created by our Spinnaker installation and the reference to the Minio. So here, mm, like the canary service of the Spinnaker doesn't use the like it, it's by de by default it's used the um, path style access so you won't be need to apply this so it will works in the same way with s3 and neo uh, then we will uh, enable the s3 support for our aws uh, and for the canary we will add the default parameters so default metric storage it's prometheus yeah, so it's like the default uh, default driver. Yeah, so we uh, enable the Prometheus, it will be default. Then we will enable, uh, we'll point to the default metrics account that we added here. It's again, it's Prometheus, uh, sorry for the bad naming. And the default storage accounts where um, we will find all the, um, all the metrics. To reduce the um, amount of the um, data that will be operated by Spinnaker, so I just disabled the um, statistics ending yeah, to the Spinnaker organization. I uh, changed um, the time zone. Yeah, to um, so this is important when you use the Chrome schedule for your pipelines, or um, if you want to operate with some with some timings. Then I need to select the Spinnaker version uh, that I want to install. So um, the set of the available versions you can get with a whole version list. Yeah, so just get the set of the versions, select the latest one and configure it here. Once everything is configured, so in our case, mostly everything is configured. So we just make the hull deploy apply. So it will generate so according to the stuff that we created, it generate the config file. Yeah, uh, every time uh, when you change something, you will have the backup configuration. So you will be able to roll, uh, roll out it. So the best practice uh, in this case, like um, uh, it's uh, use the how backup create yes yeah, so create the backup yeah and store it somewhere in the s3 bucket or or, or etc so this will um, uh, like this will give you ability like in case of if something will happen wrong uh, you'll be able to redeploy your spinnaker instance so once it will be applied we will use them how deploy connect so this is what we will actually use here. Okay, so how many memory we have here? So for now it's enough. Yeah, so uh, every time when you call the HAL, HAL uh, config or HAL deploy or any kind of HAL uh, sub commands. So it will check in uh, and validate your configuration. Okay, and it's forwarded, um, it's to the local ports. Okay, so let's go to our sorry, new, new tab. Let's go to our local host, it's 900. Yeah, so it's fine because I configured the HTTPS support because um, for the um, configuration of the um, SAML, uh, I need uh, HTTPS support. So I just 
generated my own certificates and license it. Okay, so I configured the authentication system and used development octa. So for your purposes, you can like generate uh, your own temporary octa account and configure it with Jenkins like for for your purposes. Or for example, if it's critical, so I'll I could share the as it's a temporary account, so I can share the credentials for this account. So you can definitely will be able to use it for the configuration purposes. Uh, okay, so the passwords in the txt files don't do that. Okay, sign in. So even with a local host, I I'm able to configure the the SAML support. So it's uh, how the UI looks like. But before that, let's take a look uh, on the rest of the configurations. Uh, actually, it's the uh, last script that is actually optional for you. So uh, as I mentioned before, I configured the SSL stuff. So here is like, I put the set of the commands to generate all the certificates in all required formats. Yeah, once we um, like created all that stuff, we config with the Halyard, we configure the SSL support. So we will uh, like as Spinnaker is written on Java, so it's used uh, Java key store format, yeah, to operate with certificates. Yeah, so just uh, generate these certificates with a key to, yeah, so it's uh, embedded inside of the Halyard distribution, so no worries, you will be, you won't be need to install it separately. So configure uh, the API to use the SSL and then enable it. So the same for the for the deck here yeah, for the UI. So configure uh, the UI to use the SSL accounts here. So as it's a simple UI service, um, so you won't be need to use the Java key storages. So you will be able to just point to the certificates, enable the UI, and actually your UI will be available through the HTTPS. However, like you won't have the HTTP support anymore. So if you will use any kind of load balancers or something like that, please care about the automatic redirect. And another stuff that we need to configure, it's the um, authentication and authorization. So we will use the SAML stuff. So for the, um, for that purpose, I will, I will be need to generate some kind of RSA key. So I will generate it and store it again in the GKS format. So here I place it in a SAML. And then I just need to configure authentication. So in the hull yard, so authentication uh, will be aus n, in authorization will be aus z. Yeah, so here I need to point um, uh, to my key store. Um, then I will be need to add some kind of SAML metadata that I can take from the Okta. Or for example, if you won't care about the Okta, you can install the key clock for that purposes. The issuer uh, and the set of the parameters that must be mapped from your identity provider to um, like to actual uh, Spinnaker parameters. So once everything is configured, just enable the SAML support <coughs> and everything will be fine. Another step that we will do is we will configure the authorization mechanism. So the um, Spinnaker will use the um, groups uh, from your identity providers uh, as, as actual roles. And uh, through the UI, you will be able to configure the access of some specific groups uh, to some specific areas of your Spinnaker instance. Yeah, so by default, by default, uh, we need to configure um, like default identity provider uh, roles for the for the administrator permissions yeah, because uh, without it, once we will just log in, we won't have any kind of access. Yeah, so in my Okta, I created, um, just a sec. So in my Okta, I create 
that's, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Of the groups that I will, um, that I will use for that purposes. So I have the service accounts, administrators, and um, everyone's. And I can figure it my application and assign that group, um, assign that group to my application. Yeah, so, um, so here we are. So we have the administrators and the service accounts. Uh, so the detailed instruction, how to configure the SSO with the SAML, you will find in the internet. So there are a lot of different tutorials and um, there are not too much stuff there. So uh, we configure like as default admin role, we, we bind the admin permissions by default to the administrators group. So everybody who will be in the administrators group yeah, they will have the admin roles. Once we configure this, we can enable the authorization. And once we configure all that stuff, because like we configure the, all that items locally, we can apply all our changes with how deploy connect. Yeah. For some kind of uh, triggers, we will be need also permissions. And for that purposes, the Spinnaker use the service account system. So we will uh, create uh, our service account. Yeah, so you will be need to create it through the REST API. So forward the um, spin front service and uh, just post the information about your service account to it and it will appear in the system. So how it actually works, we have this service account that will be used by some kind of third party systems that will operate with our Spinnaker. So in our case, it will be Jenkins. And the linkage of that service account to uh, specific groups uh, in our identity provider. So I created the service account, um, um, service account uh, groups and link it to my service account. So I won't be need to configure the admin permissions here. Yeah, because uh, I will uh, add this, um, add the permissions for this service account uh, explicitly in the um, on the application level of my Spinnaker instance. And once you installed all that stuff, just uh, resync the um, set of the groups from your identity provider to the Spinnaker, and voila, you mostly will have the productionized version of the Spinnaker. Let's try to meet with the UIs. Yeah, so I'll share all the scripts, so no worries. So it's fully automated, so you will be able to execute it. Like, And also I numbered it um, with the right order how you need to execute it. So install Minikube, then uh, install Minio, Jenkins, Prometheus, configure the credentials, start the Halyard, configure the Spinnaker, and optionally configure everything else. Uh, Okie dokie. So let's take a look on the Spinnaker UI, how it actually looks. So probably somebody had the experience with Spinnaker, but for those participants who had a chance to work with that system, so we will we will meet with the UI. Uh, the main sections here is a project. So project will allow you to build some kind of uh, like group your applications in some projects and we'll build them um, the actual um, actual dashboards. Yeah, so we will in, inside of the project, we will include set of the applications that will be demonstrated in the dashboard for that project. Set of the clusters. Yeah, so in our case, it will be um, set of the pods and the statuses of the pipelines. So once we will, um, like configure our pipelines. And um, once uh, we will have the application ready, so we will just configure the project. So I'll show you how it how it looks. Uh, another level of the abstraction, it's the application. Yeah, so application, uh, it's something similar to the microservice. Yeah, so you can create some specific application with the name, owner, 
select the reference to the source code for this application. So as we will use the Kubernetes, we won't be need to configure um, configure this stuff, but we will be need to configure the permissions. Yeah, so by default, we will select the service account. So service account, we will use just for the execution of the pipeline. So the service accounts won't be able to change the pipeline for our application. <laughs> However, like we also will be need to add the administrators here uh, with a set of like all the permissions. So we won't be need to create the applications because I prepared everything for you. So here we are. Okay. Yeah. So. All the permissions here, all the stuff is here, so you won't be need to configure everything else. For the application configurations, once you will create it, you will be able to configure the global notifications uh, with the Slack, Teams, emails, uh, SMS, or something like that. Configure the features that will be enabled for this application, like clusters, pipelines, load balancers, and firewalls. So just keep in mind that for the Kubernetes, yeah, um, the alternative of the cluster will be deployments or replica sets. Yeah, the alternative of the load balancers. So in load balancer section, you will see the services and ingresses. And as a firewalls, we will see the network policies. Additionally, for our um, application like to demonstrate it in the, in the UI, we can add some kind of extra links. Then we can perform the traffic guards. So, for example, we have the production environment. Yeah, and we can add the, um, some kind of filter here for our production environment um, to keep it safe. Yeah, so if you will configure the traffic guards, um, even the pipelines uh, won't be able to um, like scale down uh, your pods in your production environment. So you will protect your um, production uh, from the from the downtime. Uh, and additionally, you can add some kind of custom banners here yeah, that will appear uh, above. So for example, if you want to migrate your application, just add the custom banner here and uh, on the on the red color. Yeah, and uh, you will see like all the users for this application will see you, your notification message. Uh, that's all actually about the um, configuration of the of that stuff. Let's check what we have here. Okay, I already launched some kind of pipelines. So let me let me stop it. Okay. So I'll delete the executions here because we won't be need to do that. And mostly I don't have any kind of clusters here. So that's that's great. So we the, the main stuff that we will be need to configure is the pipelines. So as I promised before, we will configure two kinds of pipelines. We will configure the blue-green pipelines and the canary pipelines. Yeah, how the actually blue green works here we have the blue branch and we have the green branch so green it's our production blue it's something like our staging or new version of our application so we deploy a new version to the blue branch test everything and once everything is fine we just swap the the blue and green branch for example we will swap the production with staging so the production will become staging and staging will become production so i won't punish you and configure all that stuff uh, like together with you. So um, in this, uh, in the artifacts for this session, you have full description of these pipelines with a JSON. So you will be able to uh, edit pipeline as, as JSON, just paste it here and see all the stages here. However, let's take a look uh, how actually, how, how it works. Yes, yeah, so for my blue green pipeline, I'm configuring the automatic trigger. So I configured the Jenkins that will listen for the uh, for my job. So my job is configured here, yeah, and it builds them Docker images. 
but beside the building of the Docker images, it produced an um, artifact yeah, uh, with information about this image. So if you will take a look here, so yeah, it's the result of the Docker image inspect command. So from here, I will be just need the whole uh, whole tag uh, of uh, of our of, of the image the, from 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 this build. Yeah, in the trigger, I will use the property file. So the property file, it's the name of the artifact of this job. Yeah, so in my case, it's image JSON. So I here, I will use the image JSON. And all the data from this file will be populated uh, and I will be able to use it uh, on the different stage of my pipeline. And uh, run as user. So as I mentioned before, as for now, we have the... Uh, authorization enabled so we will be need to configure the some kind of service account uh, so th this will be triggered and the pipeline will be the stage of pipelines will be run it with um, permissions of this service account and you remember that this service account we um, uh, added to the service account group and for this application they configure it right and execute permissions Additionally, we can set the parameters. However, I will demonstrate how the parameters works on the canary. Yeah, so to do not duplicate it. So in our pipeline, we can add the different stages. Yeah, so here I have like stage that is called like, the type of the stage, it's evaluate variables. So I can define a set of the values that I will use on the next stages of my pipeline. So I can define here the some static values, or I can use the pipeline uh, expression language, actually spell, uh, with some kind of um, like calculation. Yeah, so here I can use the functions um, and etc. Yeah, so in my case, I will use trigger. So I will take the property files from the trigger and from that property file, I'll just refer to the repo tags uh, and the first occurrence of it. So if you will take a look on my artifact here, so in the repo tags, I just have the one item and the first item actually, it's the link to my image. Uh, Okie dokie. Uh, so, um, yeah, so um, what else, what else? Um, then once I have the parameters, I will build my manifest. So I will take my manifest from the GitHub and for as a render engine, I will use the customize. Actually, you can use the Helm, yeah, and uh, render everything uh, as a Helm chart. However, to simplify our example, I just prepared everything as a customized. So in the deploy folder, we have all the manifests that we need, and it will be um, it will be rendered and uh, it will be placed in the artifact that is called application manifest. Yes, yeah, so we will be able to use this artifact on the future state. So actually the main content of this artifact actually it's a rendered rendered manifest so it doesn't matter if you will use the customize or helm yeah in any case like if you will use helm so you won't um, uh, like it, it will use them helm template command not helm install so in any case you will have the rendered yaml file and on the next stage like deploy stage uh, I will reuse this artifact. Actually, I can use everything from the static code, yeah. But uh, as I already have the baked artifact, yeah, um, I will um, like I will use reuse it from the previous stage. So I will select the account where I will install it. So it's my Minikube account by default that we configured during the installation. Additional stuff here, it's the required artifacts to bind, uh, to bind, sorry. Um, the um, Spinnaker itself has um, great ability 
uh, to interact with the manifest and patch manifests like uh, according to the needs. Yeah, so I passed them um, artifact with type Docker image. And here the name of, of this artifact. So if I, if you will take a look on the um, on my manifest, so here I have the image that is called Flask app. Yeah, so I refer to this image, and also I put the reference here. And as I bind this artifact to this manifest, yeah, in that case, uh, like the spinnaker will replace this occurrence with the reference to my image and the reference of my image is the value from the from this parameter uh, parameter stage so actually from the from the trigger definitely i can just do not evaluate uh, image reference here yeah just copy this one and uh, paste it here so it will work in the same way however i will use the image reference in the in the different places so I just calculated it to decrease amount of the code. Additionally, for the deployment, we need to configure the rollout strategy. So it's optional, um, like optional, um, uh, optional stage. Yeah. So uh, by default, it's disabled. So you can enable it and point it to the some kind of Kubernetes service that must be patched, yeah? And uh, this service will be used as a, as a load balancer, yeah? So this is used like to switch traffic between the different versions of your application that you will deploy. So for now, it sounds like a mess, yeah? But I'll, I'll show you how it works on the practical way. You will understand what actually, what is that? Once we deploy it, so here we deployed everything to staging. Yeah, so for now, we don't have any kind of stage in core production, so we will um, trigger this pipeline twice. Yeah. Uh, I will have some kind of manual judgment here. So uh, the spinnaker will um, uh, put some kind of um, confirm window with my message, and I will be need to confirm if I want to proceed with the future steps. So here we have uh, two branches yeah, that will be um, that will be um, run it like simultaneously. So here I have the swap staging. So for the swap staging here, what I actually will be need to do, I will be need to annotate my resources. So I will be need to change um, the cluster and stack. Yeah, so uh, I selected um, like my stage and cluster. Yeah, because I configured everything and my manifest will be annotated with the cluster staging uh, on the deploy staging. For now, I want to select this manifest and patch it and change the this annotation from, from the staging to production and from the blue branch to the green branch. Yeah. And after that, I just want to patch the ingress and um, set the host of my ingress resource to the production. Yeah, so um, so you'll see how it actually works. In the separate branch of my pipeline, I need to check if I have the production, like if I have production deployed. And if yes, then I want to disable my production. So actually disable means I want to turn off all the user traffic yeah, from, um, from the set of the pods that belongs to the production. Then I want to do the swap of my production. So I select my production items and will mark it as a staging as, and as a blue branch. Yeah. And again, I want to reroute, so change for my staging. I want uh, to change um, uh, the host name to the staging.minikube. Additional step here. So again, I run this, the manual judgment. So uh, you can use the manual judgment with the true false, yeah, as we perform here. 
and you can also pads put some kind of uh, inputs so you have the select box from it and you will be able to select so it's presented here just to demonstrate how this could be done yeah so um, i will have the pop-up and will will be need to select between yes and no and on the next stage yeah so i will just scale down my staging so it's optional stage if i will um select here no so my staging will be uh, still persist but no traffics will be there so the same here yeah um like i just added that this stage is conditional so i want to get the like uh, output from my manual judgment uh, step yeah and if it equals yes then this stage will be executed so I answer it here yes, and my staging will be reduced to zero. Yeah, so actually how this pipeline works. Um, yeah, so let's do not change something here. So trigger is enabled. What we will perform here, we will just try to build um, some kind of Docker image here. Uh, let's build everything through the master branch yeah mm, okay so for now we will be need to wait like one one minute beside that uh, until we wait maybe somebody has any kind of questions and that we can discuss on this stage okay looks like not <laughs> Yeah, so as I mentioned before, uh, the Jenkins will um, launch the launch the pod here, and with that pod, actually it will uh, like build in, in that pod. So here is it. It will build the image and uh, push it um, to to my Docker Hub. So it's a quick process because it's a small, small image. Um, so this, until we wait, let's take a look on the set of the resources that we have here. So we have the replica set uh, where we run our um, application. We have the service that will like uh, load balance our application. We have the ingress yeah, that we um, will use um, to route to our service we have the network policy that uh, like allows all ingress traffic and this allow all egress traffic and also we have the service monitor for the prometheus that will um, scrub the metrics from our service so our application here uh, it has the metrics um, exporter so we can we just what we actually want to do we want to point to our service yeah, and scrub the metrics every five seconds. Okay, so my image is built. Let's check what I have here. Yeah, so my pipeline is triggered. What actually happens? So my manifests uh, are actually prepared. So I can take a look on the baked, baked manifest. So here we are. Um, yeah, so um, how it actually how it works yeah so it produced uh, the artifacts for me once i will go to the clusters so i have like the stage and cluster so uh, stage and cluster and inside of this cluster i will have the um, actually one uh, one pod let's take a look mini q dot oh, sorry staging dot mini q yeah, so here we are. So as you could see here, uh, my image um, starts with uh, D614. Let's take a look if you have this version in staging. Yeah, here we are. So for now, what we actually want to do, we need to confirm if you want to promote our staging to production. So if you will put the stop, so pipeline will stop, and nothing will happen. So if you'll put the continue, so what will happen next? So um, 
as we don't have any kind of production system, so the set of the stages for swapping of the production to staging will be um, uh, will be omitted. Yes, yeah, so let's take a look on the clusters here. Okay, so here we are. So I have the same version, but this version is already marked as a production. And here I have, like, it's marked as a green black, uh, green, green uh, branch. So the same stuff here. Let's try to, um, let's try, like, do not use the triggers. We can actually trigger and start the manual execution. So here we will be need to select the version of our application that we want to, um, we want to execute. Uh, for example, for example, for example, I don't know. Let's try to do this, uh, or we can actually build our, we can just build another version. So let, let's do everything here. Beside that, let's take a look on the our application. So we, it's a simple, simple Flask application. Yeah, but um, we have two different versions that we will compare during the, our canary. So the uh, first version of our application, yeah, uh, use some kind of randomized and randomly return the different status, and also um, put some kind of uh, some kind of delay, yeah, uh, random delay. So this version of the application will be slow. If you will take a look, something happened wrong. Okay. That's really weird. Let's try to restart. It's the first time when I see this issue. Uh, so we have two different versions. In the master branch, we have um, this bad version of the application. In the develop branch, we have the application with, with removed all that stuff. So the application from the develop branch will have like better, um, better latency and uh, bigger amount of the um, correct responses. Something happened wrong, I think. I think, aha, uh -huh, okay, I got you. Uh, so let's do slightly, slight, because this image is already persist, so it's a reason why it fails. Okay, gotcha. Uh, let's do, uh, let's do slightly different. Let's start our, our building process. Select um, like a different different build. I think seven zero six. Yeah, so it's this image is presented, so we can we can select it and start to run. Okay, let's take a look on our clusters here. So definitely we will see, this may take some time. Okay, the staging is deployed. So in parallel, I have the production and I have staging. So now it asked me to promote everything to the production. Yes, yeah, so I decided, yes, I'll promote it. So, for now, I just take a look on the production mini cube. So here we are, it's my production. Yeah. And this is, this will be my staging. So here we are. So this staging, yeah, but uh, the staging is actually disabled. So I won't be able to route to the staging. Yeah, and in my production, I have the fresh version, yeah. 
And as you could see here, yeah, the staging is great. So it means that it's disabled. It means that the service, Kubernetes service, um, do not route the traffic to the pods that are marked as a staging. Yeah, so what it asked me to do, it asked me to uh, scale down. So as if I don't need my staging, yeah, I can just scale it down. If something will happen wrong, so I can just go and enable my staging, and then I can go and disable my production. So, and um, it will be swapped. So, and once I will troubleshoot everything, I will be able to rotate everything back. So it's how actually, how this stuff works. So this may take some time like to scale down and another stuff about the weird UI. So the Spinnaker use um, caching here. Yeah, so um, the main problem here uh, that it could be some kind of delay. Yeah, okay, so it's disabled. So if it's disabled, let's try to delete it. So we don't need it anymore. Um, let's jump into the, um, to the canary stuff. I'm not sure if we will have enough time. So I will ask for extra five minutes, uh, probably. So for the canary stuff, so the canary stuff, um, let's take a look quickly on the, um, quickly take a look on the pipeline. So I have the init pipeline. I create the namespace for the baseline and, and, and for the canary. Then I evaluate all the parameters. Yeah, so um, here in the configuration, I added the parameters that I will be need to, to, to use. Yeah, and here, I just reduced this value. So it's an image reference. The manifest works in the same way like for the blue green and it's, it's produced the artifact. Then we use the deploy and here um, we use the image ref. So um, be careful with that because here we evaluated the parameters for the baseline and here we evaluated for the canary and we have the same parameters names. In the different branches, yeah. So in this branch, we will have the parameters from from this step. In this branch, we will have parameters from this step. Yeah. So here we deploy the manifests. Then we just exclude the traffic, and then we ask if we want to perform the canary analysis or not. Yeah. So this familiar stuff. Yes. No. And here, this stage is conditional. If it's yes, then it's, um, we will perform the canary analysis. Another step, it's the approval step. So um, it will ask me if I want to um, like deploy my changes to the production. So what I will actually do, um, I will just, um, like I can just stop the pipeline or just continue. So if I will continue my pipeline, it will remove the baseline and canary and separately um, generate the parameters uh, for my uh, production. Yeah, so it marks as, as production in green. Generate the manifests and deploy actually the manifest and simultaneously clean up the, the canary. What about the canary analysis? So um, the main parameters here actually it's a lifetime it's how many time wait like perform the canary analysis yeah so the minimal recommended time it's 30 minutes yeah but as we have the limited time here we will put as three minutes so here we will evaluate all our metrics like every one minute and here we configure the baseline and canary pair so here these parameters will be used in our canary configuration that we selected here. Yeah, so um, uh, how it could be, let, let's try to, to do it in slightly different way. Let's start, um, let's start the pipeline. Yeah, so as a baseline, yeah, so in my case, I use the production and it's uh, as a baseline, 
let, 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 let's use the latest version of the master here. Thanks. So the latest version of the master will be my production, will be my baseline actually. Um, okay, let's close and with the tab. So this is my baseline. And I also have the develop, develop image here. So I won't rebuild this because it's already built. So to store the time, I just take this develop image and I will put it as a candidate. So let's run everything. And once, once it's run, so I'll just explain you about the rest of the stages. So here the canary um, analysis use the config name and analysis could be done like real in the real time or, or the retrospective. So if you already have some kind of deployment, you can check all the metrics like examine and analyze all the metrics from for the previous period of time, but we will do it in the real time. And for our analysis, we need to add the threshold. So the if we will have just one percent, it means that the canary analysis uh, is fail. And if it has like more than ninety percentage of success, it's it will be success. So. Uh, you remember about uh, um, like another stages. Yeah. Mm, what about the um, canary configuration? So for our application, we configure it two metrics. Yeah. So we configure the metric groups and add the metrics in that group. So we have we will measure the success. It's actually amount of the um, status code two hundred and the latency like uh, how many time like what is the duration of the of the request yeah so how we configure it we use the prompt ql queries so in our case um we configure uh the like we select all the statuses with 200s check its rate across um the rest of the request with a different status and as a namespace yeah, because um, in our Prometheus, uh, just a sec, let me maybe show you. Um, just a sec, just a sec. Okay, here we are. In our Prometheus, we have a default default labels. Yeah, so here we are. We have our production. Yeah, so we have the namespace, service, and etc. So here we have a namespace that is called baseline, namespace that is called canary. We use the placeholder that is called location. So it's um it's the information from from here. Yes, yeah, so the baseline location will be uh, in the location variable, and the name of the baseline will be inside of the scope variable. Yeah, so it's the reason why we use it in such way. And the same for the latency. However, like we will use the delta here, and we will measure. Let's imagine that, like for our deployment, we have the SLA like. 250 milliseconds so we'll just um, examine this bucket yeah and if we will have like like the comparison of, of both metrics for the baseline and canary will be decreased so it means that the canary will uh, have like worse the results than than baseline it means that this test will file, fail yeah for these purposes okay so we have the baseline here and uh, we can redeploy it so now we need to create some kind of load here but before that uh, let's take a look on our baseline and on our um, so here us is our baseline and here is our canary so for the baseline we have uh, this image for the canary we have the develop image like our better image yeah, and for the production we have absolutely different image and I think we can we just 
just turn it about the production. Yeah, so uh, yeah, probably the track for the production is, is disabled right now. Okay, that's weird. Okay, no worries about that. So we need to start some kind of load testing. So I'll use Apache GMatter for that purposes. So no worries, I just placed the test plan um, as artifact. So you can find it here. So what I will do, the so main duration of my tests will be um, almost three minutes. Yeah, and um, so I'll start my test. And I see that request starts to come, so I can definitely start my canary analysis. So it will take up to three minutes. So before that, uh, let's save some time and let's start our discussion. Maybe somebody has any kind of questions, concerns, something. Uh, we have in chat a uh, whole discussion. <laughs> uh, okay, just a sec. Uh, let me open the chat. Yeah, sorry, I cannot see the chats and like, um yeah so probably you will see the chat here oh okay we have a lot of stuff here um about the on-prem kubernetes so it doesn't matter how you will use like you can use it with the cloud or on-prem so it doesn't matter infrastructure as a code approach for the spina care pipeline so for that purposes actually the pipeline templates feature is yeah, so you can like create, so you, as I mentioned before, you won't be need to like configure all that stuff uh, manually. So what you actually can do, you can export the pipeline as a template, parameterize it, and then just for the different applications, you will be able to create the pipelines, sorry, from the template. Yeah, but again, as we hadn't like enough time for that purposes, sorry for that, I hadn't chance like to demonstrate it. Yeah, so you won't be need like to manage it through the CLI and etc. So just only templates. Uh, operator. So as I remember that uh, there is some kind of operator, uh, but I'm not sure that like it's uh, like stable and operational. So as I know, like, yeah, and as um, commented here, that um, the hull yard is the easier way. Uh, yeah, and about the armory, so keep in mind that armory um, mostly limit their features for the open source products. And definitely, if you will start to use the armory, you will be need to buy armory. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe it's it sounds like something like slightly rude. However, like, it's true. Okay, any other questions? Let me check. Let's check what we have here. Uh, yeah, so about the building of the um, of the artifacts. Yeah, you can use, uh, I, actually, I, I can demonstrate you on, ex on an existing pipeline. You can add the stage. Yeah, so there are a lot of different stage types. You can, for example, uh, trigger the Jenkins job yeah, inside of your pipeline or, for example, run some kind of script yeah, or, for example, um, run some kind of webhook job yeah, to trigger some kind of webhooks. So there are a lot of, or AWS code build, for example. So it, uh, there are a lot of different ways how you can implement the image bakery. Yeah, but as the first purpose of the Spinnaker was management of the VMs, they added the HashiCorp Packer support to build not the Docker images, but um, but actually the IMIs. But again, it depends on your needs. Okay. What we have here. Okay, so we have the canary analysis completed here. No worries about like these warnings, yeah, because like we have um not too much load yeah that i can like, create from from my machine 
Yeah, so it's collected not too much data, but on the real production system, you will have like more data. So as we configure it to measure data every one minute and we perform the canary analysis during every uh, every minute. So we have three different reports. And as we have the canary analysis report here, so what I actually want to do, um, like again, to do not spend the time and do a couple of things in parallel. So my canary analysis is uh, fine. So in the real life, you won't do that. But in this time, as it's success, I will promote everything to the production. So let's wait until the baseline and um, canary will be cleaned up and the production will be deployed with a newer version of them, of our application. Beside that, let's take a look on the, uh, on the canary report. So uh, every check has its own report. So um, this is the older report. We measure it, the request latency. So as we removed the delay in our code, so the um, canary has like better, better metrics, uh, metrics results. Yeah, so, and it has like for 4.1 percentage better for the request check so it says that actually mm, not sure why the deviation is measured in such way however if you will take a look on the on the graph or on the histogram yeah so here for the canary we have the 60 percentage of the success um, queries for the baseline just 15.6 uh, and on the different points uh, of our graph we have like 93 94 and etc so in any case we see that in our canary the amount of the success um, amount of the success um, uh, responses were better and as i mentioned like as we had the warning so we see that here we just collected 13 points uh, data points it's because we run the canary analysis for three minutes that is not good yeah, so just uh, just keep this in mind. Uh, for the rest part of the analysis, the same. Yeah, we have the uh, like better latency here. Yeah, uh, for the canary, and also we have the better um, amount of the requests here. Yeah, so twenty nine percentage of, of the success for the baseline and eighty seven the average. It's 87.6. Yeah, but the maximal is 96.8. So it's why it's not 100 percentage because like as I run everything in a multiple thread, so it's um, it's uh, definitely throttling. So no no worries about that. Yeah. So let's check if my pipeline is finished. Yeah, it's finished. So let's check. So I don't have any kind of baseline here. I don't have any kind of canary here. Let's check my production. So yeah, in my production, I have version BFC. Let's check here. Yeah, BFC. And if I'll take a look on the clusters here. Yeah, so the, my previous version is disabled because it's great. So no traffic went there. If something happened, I, and I can just easily enable this version and disable this one. So. Once I will won't be need any kind of um, data here, I will just scale it down to the zero replicas, and this definitely will be enough. So uh, just to summarize, uh, Spinnaker it's a great tool that will allow you like to combine the CI uh, and CD uh, on the high level, but mostly it's the continuous delivery. Um, oriented tool but again we have like a lot of different approaches how this could be done and uh, this like just a tool that you can combine the features of this tool um, to achieve like your goals uh, according to your project needs um, like or SRE needs or something like that so I use this product um, when I was working as SRE engineers because we had the defined um, SLA for our customers and like every time we 
uh, where need to run the canary analysis to understand if you will support them desired SLA. There are a lot of different uh, sub features that we are not able to cover like during one and a half hour, even like we overtimed, uh, but we discussed all that stuff that I expected. Um, yeah, so if this presentation is interesting for you or if you will have any kind of questions, just ping me directly. So uh, we will create the blog post uh, with all, all these materials. However, uh, like all that stuff is um, like including the canary metrics that you will be need to use. Um, all that stuff is uh, available, already available in the Git repo. Uh, let's take a look on the chat. Maybe we have any other questions? No. Uh, no, no questions. 